Loving Father, may we hear and receive your word, that our lives may be challenged and changed to your glory. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Please do be seated. Lord, if my brother sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? To which Jesus replied, not seven times, but I tell you, 77 times. Thus Jesus sets out before us the challenge of forgiveness. In any act of forgiveness, there are at least two parties involved. Those who seek forgiveness and those who offer, or may offer, forgiveness. This morning in today's Thought for the Day, I'm going to focus on offering forgiveness. Not seven times, but 77 times. Peter acknowledges the challenge we all face when offering forgiveness. How often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Forgiveness is seldom a once and for all act. At times, we may reach beyond ourselves and forgive a hurt, even an enormous hurt, such as Gordon Wilson did after the murder of his daughter, Marie, in Enniskillen in November 1987. The memory the pain of a hurt can and probably will return, often unbidden. And we'll be called once again to reach beyond ourselves and to forgive once again. Perhaps on every Marie's birthday, Gordon felt his pain once again. And he may well have had to reach beyond himself once again and forgive. Forgiveness is seldom a once and for all act. How often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Not seven times, but 77 times. Now, forgiveness is not forgetting. Forgiveness is not pretending the injury never happened. Forgiveness is an act of healing, of self-healing. As we offer forgiveness, which may be received or rejected, that is not our responsibility. All we can do is offer. As we offer forgiveness, from the very first time we offer forgiveness, we begin a healing process. Without that, the hurt we harbour will be a cancer within us, waiting, festering, growing, and misshaping our lives, our well-being. This misshaping can manifest itself in many ways, physically, emotionally, spiritually, whichever way we may divide ourselves. Forgiveness is an act of healing, of self-healing. And that self may be for us as individuals. It may be for us as a community. It may be even for us as a nation. One of the challenges we face in offering forgiveness is in our inability to truly understand the motivation behind the hurt, the injury, the pain we incurred. Why did he, why did she, why did they do that, or say that, or even think that? Now we all act in ways that are shaped by our nature and by our nurture, by events both large 
and very, very small. A word spoken or unsaid. An act made or withheld. We are all shaped in ways that are beyond our ken. If we knew why they did what they did, why they said what they said, if we fully understood, then forgiveness might be a lot easier. But such a depth of understanding is beyond us. So forgiving is an act of will. Sadly, our wills as individuals and as communities is often too weak and misshapen. That is why in the Lord's Prayer, Jesus instructs us to pray that God's will be done on in earth as it is in heaven before, before we ask for and offer forgiveness. Forgiving, reaching beyond ourselves, is seldom something we can do alone. We may need the good counsel of family and friends. And we do need the guidance, the strength, and the courage which God alone can give. Without seeking God's good grace, our forgiving can be but a mumbling of good intention, a mumbling which will bring no healing. Our forgiving must, as Jesus tells us at the end of his story about forgiveness, our forgiveness must be from the heart. Our forgiveness must be from the heart. From hearts in tune with God's heart. Alexander Pope wrote in one of his essays, that to err is human, to forgive, divine. And we are all too human. But we can also all aspire to be divine, to have the heart of God within us. And that is yet another act of will. But an act we need not make in trusting to our own strength alone. We can make that act of will to seek the heart of God and to forgive, knowing that God walks with us.